On this episode of Doing the Most, we're going to be making walnut butter. I like walnut butter because walnuts, as far as I know, have the highest amount of omega-3 fatty acids of any nuts. They're a really good non-animal source of those fatty acids, which we need for brain development and heart health. And although I'm trying to increase fish in my diet, it's not my favorite. So walnuts serve as a good source of that nutrient for me. To start out today, your ingredients are a pound of walnuts, three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt, and honey to taste. We used about two teaspoons, but it's totally up to you how much honey you use. The first step is to sift through your walnuts. You can skip this step if you like, but I found that when we got the walnuts from the bulk bin at the store, that there was quite a bit of walnut particulate that ended up burning when we roasted our walnuts and added a bitter flavor to our walnut butter. So I sifted them out in the colander as best as I could and then sorted through them flat on the sheet pan. Obviously you're not gonna get everything, but as much as you can get out as possible will probably make your your walnut butter taste better. I went ahead and saved our leftover particulate to add back to our walnut butter later because I have a strong philosophy of trying not to waste whenever possible. While you are sifting through your walnuts, if you choose to do this step, you should go ahead and preheat your oven to 375 degrees and then spread your walnuts out flat on the sheet as much as possible so that there's not any of them stacked on top of each other. Once your oven is up to 375 degrees, you'll roast your walnuts for 10 to 12 minutes until they've darkened in color, they're pretty fragrant, and we could hear the oil in the nuts kind of sizzling and popping, which was exciting. You'll rotate about halfway through just to make sure that you get even coverage, and as you can see, our oven thermometer does not stay up very well. Once they're done, they should have darkened in color. You'll be able to smell them. Like I said, you may even be able to hear them. You don't want to be too dark because like I said, that can add some bitterness to your butter. But if you do, it's not the end of the world. You can make up for it with some honey. Then once they're done roasting, let them cool for about 10 minutes. If you have a wire rack, that's great. That allows for air circulation. If not, it's not the end of the world. Go ahead and put your walnuts into the food processor. After about 10 minutes, they should be cool enough to handle pretty well. And like I said, once I had finished adding all of our roasted nuts, I went ahead and added back our unroasted nut bits and pieces. So once you start processing pretty quickly, it'll turn into a paste, which is really fascinating to watch these whole pieces of nuts become paste. Once you've got a pretty good paste, you can scrape down the sides and add in your salt and honey. And at this point, you have a lot of freedom with what you do next. It depends on how thick you want it to be, how chunky you want it to be, how much honey or other sweetener you want to add. It's all to your preferences and tastes. I will say that walnuts can create a pretty liquidy butter because of the amount of oil and fat that's that's in there and so one thing you can do if it's too thick is actually add water which seems counterintuitive but because you're creating an emulsion so like when we make mayonnaise the water and fat actually make it thicker rather than thinner and so if you have a nut butter that's too thick you can add oil and if it's too thin, you can add water. And so I added a couple of teaspoons of water to get it to the consistency I wanted. And then about another teaspoon of honey to get it to the flavor that I wanted. Like I said, this part is totally up to you. For walnut butter, I recommend about two teaspoons of honey and a teaspoon or two of water to get it to a, a spreadable consistency and a good flavor. Process until you feel like it's the right consistency that you want and then you can transfer it to a jar. About a pound of walnuts will get you a pint or so of walnut butter which is convenient for us and we just keep it in a jar in the fridge. It spreads really well, very much like the natural peanut butter you get in the store. What I will say, I have not had any separation issues like you often see with natural nut butters that you get in the store. It stays consistently emulsified. It is very spreadable. It's not like Jif or Peter Pan peanut butter, but it's very tasty and has a really great consistency and I enjoy it a lot. 
There is probably a shelf life on it for how long you can keep it in your fridge. I think America's Test Kitchen says something like six weeks, but I haven't had that problem yet because I typically go through it in a week or two. Thanks for stopping by and learning how to make nut butter with us today, or specifically walnut butter with us today. I encourage you to check out our Instagram at doingthemostok or our website at doingthemost.org. Thanks.